I'm going to show you how to set up a Windows jump box. Right now I'm connected to this Windows 2016 web server hosting up a web page for me directly using RDP over the internet. So this exposes my web server to potential attacks using RDP over the internet. I would be much safer if I set up a jump box. The jump box is as the name implies. I go into the jump box over the internet. I connect to the jump box. And then from there, I jump into the servers I need to administer. So therefore, the jump box is the only device with exposure to internet connections using RDP. And then the Windows servers can only be connected to, for management purposes, using RDP from the jump box. So if I'm not coming from the jump box, then I cannot connect to you for RDP management purposes. So let's go to our web server here in the AWS Management Console, and let's take a look at the security group right now. So the security group is set up, so that way their RDP is allowed from everybody on the internet. So this is, this is a bad example. I want to encourage you to be way more specific. Even if you want to allow direct connections to your servers using RDP over the internet, you should figure out a more appropriate address to use here. So think about your corporate network. When your administrators go to the internet to then connect to these servers for administrative purposes, what are their addresses being translated to by network address translation? What is that range that is used by your corporation? you'd want to put that range in there. So that way there, when their addresses get translated and they connect, then this rule here would say, yes, that is a valid address to connect and everything's fine. And you prevent everybody else in the world from connecting via RDP. If you're at home right now, practicing and playing around, I highly encourage you to look up the public IP address of your router, plug it in there with a slash 32 address, ensuring that only you from home have the ability to connect to this server over the internet using RDP. But I want to show you the jump box, right? We're going to come back here and change this. That's why I spent a little bit of time covering this because once we create our jump box, I have to change this. So that way there, we only allow connectivity from the jump box, not from any other IP address. So let's go ahead and create our jump box right now. We'll go back under instances. We'll click on launch instance. I'm going to create a Windows 2016 server for this. Uh, general purpose instance type is fine here in my particular case. Now I'm going to click configure instance details. Number of instances, one's fine right now. I'm going to put it in a specific VPC I created. I'm going to put it in my public subnet. It's the same subnet in this case as the web servers are in. I'm going to use my subnet settings. I'm not going to join any directory domain right now, but I could. I'm not going to worry about any IAM roles or any of these other options. So you would configure this based on exactly the options you need to have configured for your particular server. I don't even need, in this case, any extra user data. I don't need to run a PowerShell script here. I'm happy with just the defaults that are being provided for this server in this example. But if you need some adjustments, for example, you want to harden the Bastion server and you want to use some PowerShell scripts to harden the server, you'd put the PowerShell scripts in there to harden up the server as much as you can. So let's add some storage. I'm fine with the default servers. We're not really going to be storing anything on the Bastion server. We're just using it as a an intermediary device for connectivity purposes. So I'm okay with just the minimum size for hard drive and going with the general purpose GP2. Let's add some tags. So I'm just gonna put one tag here, but you definitely wanna be more, uh, uh, more creative and detailed with your tags in the real world. So name, value, I'm just gonna put in here wins jump box. Next, we're gonna go ahead and click configure security group. Now, when it comes to our security groups, we need to create a new one for our Windows jump box. I'm gonna call this one our Windows jump box security group. And it's allowing us to provide uh, SSH connectivity into the jump box. And that's all I want in this case. So it's a custom TCP rule 3389 from everybody again, We'd want to be more specific. So what is the range that your 
Network administrators, IP addresses get translated to via NAT. You'd want to put that in there. Or if you're at home right now, as I mentioned earlier, put in the public IP address of your router with a slash 32. Therefore, you are just much more specific and therefore you're securing yourself. This works, but you're exposing yourself to the entire world. Even though it's a jump box, you shouldn't do that. Review and launch. I am happy with this configuration we went with. Click on launch now. And now we need to choose a key pair. So demo key pair is the key pair that I am using for the Windows web server. So I do not want to use the same key pair for the jump box. This is how we're going to provide uh, some um, in depth in our security. So if I use the same key pair for the jump box, that means we're going to end up with the same password for the jump box. So what we want to do is you want to use a different key pair for the jump box. Therefore, we have a different password for the jump box than the web servers. And therefore, if you want to compromise the web servers using RDP, you'd have to compromise first the password for the jump box and then compromise the passwords for the web servers. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and click on jump box here because I created a public private key pair earlier for the jump box. Here it is. I'm just going to use it and I acknowledge I have the private key right now stored locally on my machine. So I'm going to click launch instances now. And it's going to go ahead and launch the jump box. So what we want to do now is we want to wait for connect up at the very top to show up. Then we can click on connect and it'll allow us to get the DNS name, the administrator username, as well as the password. And the password will be retrieved from the private key of our key pair. So this can take a little while. <laughs> uh, we already have the DNS, so that's a positive. That's a plus for us right now. And connect is there. So let's click on connect. And this is the information we're going to need. So I'm going to click on get password now. Password not available yet. Try again. Try again. Please wait at least four minutes after launching. I don't have four minutes. <laughs> All right, I'm going to be uh, uh, the inpatient administrator right now. Keep clicking try again, try again, try again, close. But wait a second, I just realized something. I have something else I need to do that I haven't done yet. So let's go ahead and do that and then we'll come back. I got to modify the security group for who? For the web server. So if you go to our security groups right now, we go under our Windows Web Server Security Group, it still says allow connectivity from the internet. When in reality, we only want to allow connectivity from our jump box. So here's our jump box security group we just created. And it's allowing our RDP connections in from everybody. But what I'm here for is to figure out what is the group ID, SG-5498. So I'm just going to try and memorize that as best I can. I'm going to go back to the Wins web server security group. And we're going to modify our entry here by clicking on edit under inbound rules. And then we're going to modify this entry right here. SG what? SG Windows jump box right there. That's the one we want. So I'm going to click on that one. So what this means now is we're only allowing RDP connections from any server that is in the jump box security group. So if you're not in the jump box security group, you cannot use RDP to connect to the server anymore. So if we go back now to our server, uh-oh, look at that. I don't have connections anymore to that server, that web server. Let's close this out. I'm going to try and reinitiate that RDP connection to the Windows web server just to show you that I no longer have RDP connectivity. Well, we're still waiting for that password to finalize for the jump box. So open back up my Remote desktop to the Windows web server, click connect, and already it's saying, no, 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 no. Nope. So I won't be able to now. So this is working perfectly. Now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what is the username and password for the jump box. And yes, you're going to be able to see that right now, but I'm not worried because by the time you watch this video, this password will no longer be used and this jump box will be gone. So I'll click on browse here, find the jump box. PEM file, there it is, Jumpbox PEM file, put it in, decrypt the password, and there is the DNS name, the username, and the password we need. So I'm just going to copy this over here to my clipboard. 
and let's go ahead and start an RDP session. So I'm connecting to the jump box here. So I need the public name of the jump box or <laughs> the host name of the jump box. All right, so we'll put that in. Now it's going to ask for the username, which we got by clicking on connect up there. And now we need our password. All right. Yep. So now I'm into the jump box. Well, I'm getting into the jump box. Once I'm in the jump box, now I could administer any of those servers using RDP by simply opening up RDP on this server, this jump box, and then putting in the appropriate information about the particular server that we're trying to connect to. Now, one of the great things about doing it this way is that I could start using the private IP addresses of the servers now in that subnet. I don't have to go with the DNS names or their public IP addresses anymore to connect to them because they are in the same subnet. But I have the host name, the DNS name handy right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that. All right, it's still loading everything up. So I have to give it a little bit more time. All right, RDP. Remote. There we go. So we'll open that up. I'll now put in the DNS name, public IP address, or private IP address of the web server I want to connect to. And then I'll click connect. And because we granted the ability to connect using RDP from the Jumpbox security group, as you can see, it's allowing me to connect as long as I have the right username and password for the other server. So now I'm successfully connected into the web server and I can administer the web server as I need to. Why is this so important? Well, you can see now how the web server I cannot RDP into directly, which means I've reduced its attack surface. And now the only way to connect into it using RDP is through the jump box. So the jump box is the only device now exposed to the public internet with RDP. So this is a very important device, the jump box that you need to consider if you plan on administering any of your AWS EC2 servers over the internet, you really want to go to a jump box first and then branch off to the devices after that.